Hi again, Sean here, North Florida Saltwater Fishing. Boy, time flies and you're having fun, doesn't it? It's been six months since I purchased my Carolina Skiff 162 JLS, and as promised in the initial walkthrough video, this is the six month review. You're going to get every square inch of the boat on video, both sides of the hull, the liner, latches, fasteners, live wells, every square inch of the boat. Up close, let you decide how you feel the boat has fared over its first six months. Uh, keep in mind, it is a garage kept boat, and I like to think I take care of my boat fairly well. Uh, it gets desalted, then fresh water rinsed, and then washed, and then a, then a ceramic coating put on the hull after every use. So, I um, mean, my goal is to make the boat last. But as we all know, no matter how well you take care of something, if it's cheaply made, it shows. So, I'll let you be the judge. Uh, at the end of the video, obviously, I'll give my my take on the you know overall performance of the boat over the first six months. Uh, there's going to be clips of the boat performing in rough conditions, uh, catching fish, you know, doing doing what I bought it to do. Um, I hope you find it informative. Please leave uh, any comments or questions you might have. Is there something else you'd like to see a little closer? I'll dig back in and shoot that and, you know, either get it to you personally or if it's enough to make a video, I'll post a complete new video on it. I don't have a problem with it. I'm here for you. So without further ado, let's get started with our six month review of the Carolina Skiff 162 JLS. Okay, well, any fishing trip that involves a boat, well, your first stop is going to be at the fuel pump. And one of the most attractive things about this boat is its fuel efficiency. I can do just about everything the big boys can do, from skinny water to near offshore, the beaches, the jetties, you name it. And at a throttle range of 4,500 to 5,000, this boat cruises at 25 to 30 at six to seven miles per gallon. It will, this is a 40 mile an hour boat. That's at like 6,300 RPM, wide open throttle. Uh, and at that, I think we were getting somewhere around three and a half, four. That's still pretty dang good. So uh, I'm super happy with the fuel efficiency of this boat. Okay, now that we've taken out a second mortgage so we can afford to fuel the truck and the boat, let's talk about towing and launching. Uh, my tow vehicle is a 2020 Ford Ranger, has a four cylinder EcoBoost, and it tows this boat like it doesn't know it's back there. Backing, super maneuverable, no problems at all backing. Uh, you'll see here, even I got it straight. And I'm backing the boat off the trailer now. My beautiful wife, Rachel, is going around to the truck, gonna pull it out and park it for me. And I'm gonna flip the boat around here and I'll meet her over at the dock, pick her up, and we're gonna head out. All right, coming up next is a series of clips demonstrating the fishability and versatility of the 162 JLS. Oh, 
Nice ride back. Okay. Well, that was the fun stuff. Now we're going to take a real close look at the condition of the Carolina Skiff 162 after six months and 53 hours on the engine. This is going to be slow and tedious because I want to show you as close as I can get to every square inch of the boat up close and personal. I want you to look at every fitting, every screw, the gauges, the hatches, the latches, the hinges, everything. You'll notice you don't see rust streaks, even my trim tabs, I mean they look practically brand new. The boat is garage kept and I've only had it for six months, but this has seen absolutely nothing but exclusively salt water. And it's had 53 hours in the salt water. Anywhere from the creeks to 12 miles offshore. And everything in between. We're going to start on the port side, work our way from stern to bow. No sign of rust or corrosion anywhere. There is a small spot over on the starboard side that I actually I slowed down and zoomed in on so you can see it. Apparently I lit a spring to keep some salt water on it. I didn't even notice until I was actually taking the video. But I'll either clean that up and if it doesn't clean up right I'm going to go ahead and replace it. for my deck lids on the front casting platform. This is my forward navigation. here. It sure does appear that, quality, that uh, Carolina Skiff uses quality stainless steel parts. Not even the slightest sign of rust or corrosion. Coming up here is what I was talking about before. Apparently that spring is probably not the same metal as that pin and a little, little bit of salt water set on that apparently and there's that little bit of rust. Uh, take that off, see if I can't clean it up. If it doesn't clean up well, I'll just get a new pin in the spring. It looks like the fastener itself, no corrosion on it, just where that spring's touching the pin.
but obviously the rest of the boat has nothing, so uh, that's going to be my fault. I apparently left some water on there, didn't know it. up inside the boat you can't quite see in there but you look at those pins for your navigation lights no corrosion none of the nasty green stuff another big advantage of the 16-foot boat is it's it's easy to to get it cleaned up after a day of fishing the starboard side Locker is my anchor locker, rain suits, and other miscellaneous items. Port side locker, that's where my fish bag goes, my small fish bag for everything but kingfish. Kingfish, I got a larger kill bag that I just have rolled up, and if I need it, I'll roll it out on the deck. Horn cover looks brand new. You'll see some little rust stains in both of my bait wells. That's because I used some cheap bit nets and left them in there and they rusted. I'm gonna Try to find something non-toxic to clean that. I've just left it alone so I don't want to risk killing bait. It's just, co it's just cosmetic at this point, but it still bothers me. caught it but over there on the, the right I installed a raw water wash down and the way I designed it is I just tied into my bait well or live well pump with a valve that way I don't have to add a separate motor should I say. But even the bait wells that stay full of salt water, I mean, look at the latches, the hinges, everything looks brand new. I have no complaints about the hardware that Carolina Skiff used on this boat. I 
wish I'd have got a light to poke down in this bilge. It looked a lot better in person than it does on film, but you can see where I tied in to the line running from the bait well pump, and then it runs back over to my raw water wash down. Welcome back everyone. Well, by now I, you probably gather that my opinion of the first six months performance of the Carolina Skiff 162 JLS is pretty positive. Uh, there's not a whole lot bad I can say about it. I'm not trying to be a fanboy for Carolina Skiff. I mean, they don't sponsor me. Uh, nothing like that. I'm not getting any, nothing from Carolina Skiff you know, for talking good about the boat. I'm just, for a boat that fits in my garage, I can do inshore up to about, or down to about six inches of water. Uh, near shore, I've had it 12, 15 miles off. It's got to use good judgment, pay attention to the weather, you know, know what time of day it is, know what, you know, know you need to be closer to shore when it gets near, you know, afternoon, because you know what happens in Florida every afternoon, uh, have the appropriate safety equipment, you know, your life vest, your VHF, your signal devices, make a float plan. My wife always knows where I'm going to go when I leave the house. If for some reason I don't come back and no one's heard from me, at least she has a spot for people to start looking. Uh, all that being said, for a 16 foot boat that fits in my garage, that gets to fuel economy where I can afford to run it with today's fuel prices. Um, I would not only buy it again, I can't think of another boat with the restrictions that I have to work with that I would rather have. Um, I'm sure there's one out there. I just have a road in it, uh, but I've been in a few, um, 56 years old. I've been on and off running boats since I was 13 years old. Uh, I lived on I lived on a boat for four years, so uh, I've been on a few. And again, given the restrictions that I have to work with with a boat that has to fit in my garage every day, and what I'm able to do with this, and the uh, the cost associated with running it, I couldn't be happier. I hope this video has been informative. If so, you know, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, uh, please. You know that helps. Uh, we're going to do another review on this at a year. And uh, hopefully I'm as happy at a year as I am at six months. So uh, all that being said, you guys, tight lines, screaming drags. I hope to see you guys on the water. Bye now.